Thanks a lot for the invitation and also thanks a lot for coming um, Sunday morning to the talk. Um, I also have to thank Goethe Institute um, for inviting me as well. So um, it's a pleasure to be here. Nice uh, conference and festival. So my name is Julia Kahl. Um, I'm a graphic designer, editor and publisher um, at Slanted Publishers in Germany. We are based in the very southwest in Karlsruhe. It's uh, 600 kilometers away from Torino. Um, this is our studio in Karlsruhe. It's in a lively neighborhood. We have a nice neon sign in the storefront. Um, we are independent publishers and designers um, with a strong focus on typography. And uh, this is how we work. Um, this is our studio and we are four in the studio. Um, one girl is missing at that moment. Um, and we have some people additionally helping us, some freelancers. So we are publishing magazines, uh, for um, especially Slanted magazine, of which you might have heard of already, and also publications in the typographic graphic field. These are our latest publications, and moreover, we are editors of um, some tier of calendars. One is the Photodarium, which you can see here, um, um, a Polaroid tier of calendar, and um, the Typodarium, which is a typographic tier of. So this is one of the most important persons in our studio because this is my business partner, Lars Harmsen. And um, he lives in Munich and we are working together for already 11 years. Um, since four years with a distance of 300 kilometers. And uh, recently he just lived in Dubai, so there was even a bigger distance. Um, so one thing that connects us is that we are both interested in other cultures and that we love to travel. And that's why we travel to Portugal. Um, we visited Viva Lamego. This is the oldest tiles factory in Portugal. It's based in Sintra. This is the um, staff working there. Um, yeah, old ladies um, doing those brilliant handcrafting stuff. That she's just making tiles out of clay. And they are producing their big murals for metro stations, etc., all over the world. So there, for example, they made some color chests. This is the tile color palette they have in that factory. It's amazing. And so she is uh, like painting by hand everything. And in the end, it looks like that. So um, it was interesting for us to meet design studios in Portugal. We made a road trip from Lisbon to Coimbra and then up to Porto. Um, we met about 27 studios and one of these was Petrita, um, Jose and Maria. And um, they are graphic designers and they are much interested in the tradition of their country. So they are working with like uh, tiles small tiles, old tiles, like those that usually were produced in those old factories. It's like five by five centimeters, it's really small. And what they do is that they also make like big murals with that. These are photos from the studio. And in the end, they um, have this heritage from their country, but they translate it to a modern medium. And um, th this is their work actually. Um, this is the cover of um, Slanted Portugal of the magazine. We also have like that pattern that looks like um, the tiles, like the blue and the white ones we could see everywhere when traveling through the country. So we went to New York also, and New York was all about legends somehow. Um, we made studio visits again and had a, had a look around and we saw like those I love New York logos, which you all might know, I guess. So we met this guy. Um, this is Milton Glaser, the one who made the logo for New York. And um, we met him for an interview. And while meeting him for the interview, um, 
This is the, the issue, by the way. It says New York, it's a very abstract cover. It's an N and a Y, like the, the towers you can see in the cityscape. Um, so when I say it's all about legends, I guess you all know Woodstock Festival or have heard of it. And we made a video and Milton Glaser told us how Woodstock Festival started. So there's a small video now. Well, not only have we been there, we were probably responsible for it. Because um, a friend of mine named Albert Grossman, uh, who was Bob Dylan's manager, and who I got to know and liked, uh, came up to see us one weekend, and we said, you know, there's a house for sale two blocks away. Uh, and we didn't know anybody had enough money to buy it. It was $5,000. No, I'm sorry, it was $50,000. Uh, and we took it to and he bought the house. Then about a year later, he asked us if he knew if we knew of a house for Dylan, Bob Dylan. He was the manager. And Shirley found a house for Dylan, and Dylan came and moved to Woodstock. And that was the beginning of the Woodstock Festival, because once Dylan was there, musicians started coming, and after a while, there were a lot of good musicians there, the band, Janis Joplin, and so on. And somebody there who was smart said, you know, everybody knows Woodstock, we'll make a festival. Even though the festival itself was about 30 miles away from Woodstock. So it's funny. So in that way, my wife created Woodstock. So and you all know the Woodstock story now. Um, last year, LB went to Tokyo, or to better say, my partner Lars went to Tokyo because uh, I had a son last year and therefore couldn't go to Tokyo at that time. So I missed this one. But when going to Tokyo, um, this was our first Asian issue. It was um, different to the ones before because we were somehow really lost in translation. So what you just heard is that they, well, 95% of the Japanese designers don't speak one word English. So um, this was really um, a hard task for us. But uh, we managed that as well with a lot of help. What you can see here is um, just um, a photo from a tower to see that the city is unbelievable huge. Um, this is Kionora Muroga. He's the editor, editor in chief of Idea Magazine, which is um, the most um, renowned uh, graphic design magazine in Japan. And this is how they work in Tokyo. They do not have a lot of space. There are a lot of people sitting in small offices. The desks are full with like uh, hundreds of books and stuff. Um, this is Ohara Daichiri. He is a paper sculptor. He makes like those really small paper sculptures. Um, this is Skin Akiyama, and he is one of the well most um, yeah m most renowned maybe uh, editorial designers. This is his studio with much more space. It's a little bit um, outside the city center. Um, and they produce those wonderful books, all very bright in color and um, super interesting stuff. Um, he also met uh, some illustrators. This is Yuki. Um, Yuki, um, Yuki does all those illustrations for the textiles in the back. Um, on the right, there is a photo of strawberries, just because uh, it was so weird to see how they handled strawberries as such a valuable good. Um, these are the drawings he does for textiles. It's based on traditional patterns as well, but with a like modern contemporary twist. So these are the, these are some of the traditional textiles again. These are some of her again. And we also met Tatsuya Ariyama. Um, he is uh, working on books mainly as well. And when we flipped through his work, we uh, um, 
somehow saw that there are a lot of patterns inside, like those sculptures. Um, on this book, he was working on textile sculptures. And there's also a lot of this red and black in, in, in general in Japanese graphic design work. So what we did is um, we decided to present the works of the studios. We met also um, this kind of sculptures. We built like uh, visual sculptures with the work of the people. So this is Slanted Magazine, um, Tokyo. It's published twice a year. This is Kigi, the ones from the video interview I just showed you. Um, and so we reflect what we discovered in the graphic design scene from Tokyo with our issue, also with the layout. So the magazine is structured in different parts. So the first part of the issues are mainly visual. Um, it's yeah, kind of a visual exhibition with not a lot of text. We just focus on what you can see. So this is uh, this is how it looks like when we are printing on a six-color offset machine in Germany, just around the corner. And we also uh, print with spot colors from time to time. This is um, the section font name illustrated in the magazine. Um, we give a font name to an illustrator, and he or she has a carte blanche and visualizes the name of the typeface just just with no limits. The other part of the magazine, with like half of, of the magazine, more than half of it, is only text. So we have like um, this interview section called 10 by 10, 10 questions to 10 designers. Um, in this uh, 10 by 10, it was to Japanese designers um, from Tokyo. And we have a second one ask in this way, uh, in this case, asking ten foreigners living in Tokyo, because there is a huge international scene of designers uh, living in Tokyo. Um, we have change of color, change of papers, and here we have a small note on the left um, that we have like the video interviews online. They are online for free, by the way, on our website. Um, by now we have 150 interviews online. This is quite a big archive. Um, and uh, yeah, on the right, the essay section starts. So what we have here is like essays that deal with a city or country related topics, um, not only from the design field. Sometimes it's also about uh, related projects and also the layout in that essays um, of the Tokyo issues have like these uh, sculptural forms. On the last pages in the magazine, we have an appendix. Um, here we have some hotspots, uh, it's like uh, yeah, some tips from the locals we met, where to go when you visit Tokyo, some hotspots. Um, we have um, favorite books and a playlist. This is by a, uh, a DJ from Tokyo. Um, there is a lot of funny music in Japan, by the way. Um <laughs> and this is our, our index where we present all the people that were included in that issue or met. Um, some useful words in the end, so you don't um, order the wrong sushi. And, and on the last page, um, it's always a small insight from our trip. So there is Rena and Ian who helped us with translations and like uh, getting into the studios. And on the bottom, there is Lars um, with uh, Yosuke in the on a rooftop um, cover. Uh, Tokyo has the found or Japan, there is Mount Fujiyama. Um, so we when we think about the cover, we are always like researching and thinking about what is connected to the theme, of course. Um, so we also check the Tokyo logos and there is also again a lot of uh, white and red and black. Um, then we were of course thinking of the flag, so we choose it as much as we can. Um, so we had that this um, red and white flag with a Tokyo smiley, but um, the Japanese told us never ever touch the flag, don't do that. Um, so when we had this, um, we thought about it again because actually we liked it. Um, and then we reduced it once more. So that's it actually. Um, we didn't use um, that point of the flag, we just used the red 
And what you can see here, those two um, characters in uh, Japanese, it says Tokyo. So it's the most simple thing actually. And we only added like that mouth to, to, to have it like a more friendly look. And um, that's, uh, that's the cover of the issue. And um, I could convince um, my team that uh, it has to be like a little bit of pink. So um, it's, yeah, maybe a, a pretty girly cover this time. Um, coming along with the issue, we always um, publish special a special edition coming with it. Um, every time there are different stuff. This time it was a Risocraft printed um, illustration booklet and a photo book. Um, the illustrated Risocraft booklet was made with some students from the university in Tokyo and the university in in university in uh, Germany. Um, so they went there for a week, worked together in a workshop, and then created those beautiful illustrations about the city of Tokyo. And the photo book that goes along with it um, was, it's called 7x7 seven seven because it's seven photographers which were invited um, to take part in that book. It's a very simple layout, just uh, for the chapter pages, only the name in uh, Latin and Japanese. Um, and then we have like some photos of the um, photographers. This is how they, um, yeah, they, they feel and they see Tokyo. So there are very different approaches on uh, how to get an impression of the city. This is how people live, some street photos some more architectural photos, um, more emotional stuff. And also here is an index where we present the photographers and uh, again, a photo in the flap. Um, in the magazine itself, we have a booklet in the back flap of the issue, which is called Contemporary Typefaces. Um, we have it in each magazine um, and we present like the best uh, typefaces, the uh, editorial selection, like the best uh, international ones um, since the last issue, plus um, uh, typefaces that are connected to the issue's theme. Um, we have it on uh, a spread. On the left, we have like waterfalls and some exemplary words. On the right, there is like more of a, a presentation of the typeface, what is most interesting about it. And in this case, we also had like the Japanese ones. And coming from this contemporary typefaces booklet, um, we decided to publish a book, um, which is called The Yearbook of Type. And it was published first time in 2012, and then in 2015, and then we had our third edition this year. Um, so The Yearbook of Type is a compendium um, of typefaces. It presents the, an independent selection of the best typefaces created all over the world. It's an alphabetical order. On the left, um, you have again like a, a visualization of the typefaces, which the designers um, themselves send us. And on the right, we have like description, we have like waterfalls, we have like the alphabet, open type uh, stuff, etc. everything what you need to know about the typeface. Um, we have a lot of non-Latin typefaces in this edition. It's um, yeah, it's great to see that there are so many non-Latin things going on at the moment. Um, Fire Go, and many more. And we have an index of typefaces as well. Um, there is an index of the typefaces in categories, like you have star serif, serif, display, etc. There's also a categorization of the designers, alphabetical order. So you get some info about them and there is a link to the typefaces server uh, working on as well. There is also um, an index about the type foundries. Um, we were in touch with, I think, uh, around 200 type foundries from all over the world. For example, I didn't know that there are type foundries on the Philippines, there are. Um, and um, we also added an index about open type features because still designers are a little bit afraid of using them somehow, which is a pity. 
And we have um, an editorial section where we made some interviews um, with type designers, for example, about variable fonts, which is a big topic, but also had some essays uh, about this theme. And this is the first time that we have a microsite as well. Um, so we somehow connected um, print with uh, online uh, in this case, because um, you can now access um, the website and um, you can click on the tiles of the typeface tiles and then directly come to the um, foundry where you can buy the typeface. But um, it all started actually, I mean, everything, everything we do started with a, with a blog in 2004. Um, it's a passion-fueled project uh, from its beginning, which it still is. Um, so this wonderful design is from 2007. Um, this, was a, this was our old web blog. Um, we started publishing daily news from the international design scene and over the past 14 years, it became one of the biggest platforms for um, design. Um, the language was completely in German at that time. In 2011, we had to redesign them. So this is um, how our website still looks like. We have more than 11,000 written articles on that platform. So if you Google something, um, there is a big choice or there's a big chance that you land on our website because there are so many articles about design-related projects. Um, we have a worldwide readership by now. Um, there is a new online shop, um, still mainly German in this case, but the navigation at least was, is in um, English. This is how uh, the articles um, look like. There is like a lot of images. Um, and because of our editorial work for the blog, um, we are nowadays also working as design journalists. Um, which connects us to some super interesting projects and places around the world. So this is uh, the very first sneak preview of our new website that will be online, hopefully, <laughs> in uh, about one month. Um, it's not uh, yet completely finished. I'm working on that day and night at the moment. Um, it will be structured in uh, three sections, news, publishers, shop. So this will make more clear maybe what we are doing on our website. Um, that we have like the news section where we yeah, publish everything around the design scene. People can also submit work. Um, the publisher section is about, um, of course, our own publications, but also about the video archive. Um, and then the shop, we will have a big marketplace where everybody can sell his stuff, no matter whether it's print run one or 10,000. So this is the um, video section, for example. This is how it looks like. Um, this is the slanted shop um, with publications from us, but also from others, as I said. You can apply as a seller there where you can sell your own stuff. And the best thing is it will be completely bilingual, so it will be in German and English. And responsive, of course. And uh, that's it. Mille grazie. <laughs>